Try know this much. We're going to break that spirit tonight. Let's lift our hands to the only one and true living God there is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, as I begin to feel spirits running in and out, to and fro, Lord, we would ask you right now to bring our minds into one mind and one accord, God. Oh, Lord, we all know that we have felt bad. Oh, we all felt like we've been on the deathbed. Oh, we all felt like we've been left alone, God. Oh, we all felt like we've been ashamed, God. We've all felt like we have never been worthy, God. Oh, Father, we all feel like that we have never been able to accomplish oh, one thing for you, God. Oh, but Lord, you brought us here tonight to let us to draw our minds one accord tonight. Forgetting all the problems of the world because they're not existent anyway. Satan, you have no authority. I cast you out of here. I didn't invite you here. You're not going to stay here. You to hit these doors and you're going to hit them wide open or you're going to deal with the sons of God. As Jesus spoke to you, hold your peace. So Satan, we cast you out. We cast down all vain imaginations. Prepare our hearts and our minds for the intellectual things of the Holy Ghost tonight and not of mankind. Adam is gold, but the Lord Jesus Christ is raised up in power and authority in the name of the Lord Jesus tonight.
Lord, every time I think I've reached the limit, Lord, I goof up. You have to show me a little more. God, I thank you for that grace tonight. I thank you for your mercy. And I thank you for your blood tonight. Without it, God, I'd be lost, most miserable. But God, I stand before your people tonight. Lord, inadequate, a novice, not sure what I would say. But God, I need you. We need you. We need to know the words of life. Today isn't a day, God, that we need just a wonderful sermon. But today we need a word from God. These trying times, Lord, we need you. Join us together in one mind and one accord. Remove me, Lord. Take me out of the way and place myself with you. Let it be as you speaking. For only you have the words of eternal life. Lord, I will be forever in debt to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church said amen. Amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. As I said, God is so good to us. And it's, uh, it, it's hard to imagine exactly how good He is. Is He good, good to anybody this week? Amen. 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 Crowd of 500, three of them, He's been good to y'all. He's been real busy. He'll get to you next week. <laughs> but he's, he's really been good to us. And uh, showed, showed us so much grace and mercy. That it's just unimaginable. And I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but there is times I feel undeserving. Right. Now, now, maybe you feel deserving now. You know, that'd be all right. I'd like to get, you, get to know you right after service. But, uh, but I feel undeserving uh, at times. Amen. And um, because, ladies and gentlemen, I find myself falling every day. But at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, I believe in a God yeah. that can and we perfect us if you yes, will. Will you in hey. It's not him, it's me. <laughs> Are you with me tonight? And he's all powerful. Yes. And he can do everything. That's right. That's right. And I believe the problem with the church tonight is we've not exploited that power. Come on now. How many has thought about examining just how far he'll go? Right. And so we've not exploited God. I believe we need to explore it. I believe we need to examine its depths, Come on. its heights. Right. I believe we need to try to get our minds wrapped around, ladies and gentlemen, just what we can do through Christ. That's right. According to the reading of the Bible, we find that that's the only hope there is. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Who believes that scripture now? Yeah. Amen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, uh, tonight, if the Lord would lead us into a word, I want to say thank you for these brothers for playing and singing all the musicians. Give them a hand clap of praise. I have, uh, I remember several, several years back, well, I guess it's been about five years ago, I hadn't been preaching just a couple of months probably. And I preached from this, uh, first and only time I ever preached from this little text, of course I, I uh, didn't have the same thing in mind then as I have tonight. Uh, but nonetheless, it was the same Bible uh -huh. and the same letter. It's just uh, the Lord seems to open things up to us from time to time. Amen. Amen. How many ever grown in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Amen. So I find myself every now and then where I see a little growth spurt. But I was thinking how really, really naive I was. And... Uh, Thinking Papa was sitting over in the corner agging me on, you know. And of course, I thought I was burning the fields up. Uh, and I uh, really wasn't doing nothing much at all. But the Lord had his way in it. And uh, so here I am tonight, and Brother Greg has given me yet an op another opportunity to come and speak for you among these great men like Brother Greg and Uncle Bob. Uh, it's been just a trailblazer. Can't find no fault in him whatsoever, so... Let's just join our minds together and see what the Lord will speak to us. How many believes the Lord speaks to His church? Yes. Amen. Amen. If He speaks to His church, how many believes you're His church? Amen. Then He'll speak to us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, if we notice in the reading of the Scripture here, Peter and John, they are going, as the Bible says here, is going to pray, going to worship. And there's a certain man who sits at gate beautiful, undoubtedly most every day, 
and he's looking for some alms. Right. And uh, we all know what alms is. Right. And uh, he's morning needing some alms. He's a handicap. And so he's deserving of alms as far as that's considered. Right. And uh, but we find that he that two special men approached that day. Now I began to wonder about this, and I said, I wonder what was different about this day than it was the prior day. Right. Because we know Peter and John, after their experience, or upper room experience, I'm sure they was praying every day. That's right. And if you study the customs out, you'll find this is exactly what they did. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, this was a day that Peter and John, they're walking down the road and coming up to the gate there, and they see the man in need of alms. And you notice as we read the fourth verse, he... First, of course, he said he needed alms. And, but Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, but John said, look on us. Uh -huh. Come on. And then you notice the fifth verse. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. How many wants to receive something from him tonight? Right. And uh, Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Right. But such as I right. give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, and I rise up and walk. Now, I would like to say something right off the bat, ladies and gentlemen. You can't give something you ain't got. That's right. How many would agree with that tonight? Amen. 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 And uh, I want you to notice something in the reading of the scripture here, ladies and gentlemen. Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but such as I have. Yeah, that's right. Some he has. He's got it. Yeah. How many knows he's got it now? Yeah. 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 Isn't that good? Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Yeah. Brother Shepherd was speaking last night, and I'm by no means going to try to pick up where he left off. There's no sense in trying to preach a perfect message. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, he was talking about celestial and terrestrial. That's right. uh -huh. And you know, you know, this this person, you and I, we're limited. How many's got limitations? In the natural, we have limitations. Uh, you know, I was reading on the internet the news and different events. You know, it's been happening over in London in the Olympics. And uh, some of them people swim like fish. Right. Well, I swim like a dog. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? They call yeah. it dog paddle or whatever. I swim dog paddle. I've swum rivers and everything else. But dog paddle works just like everything else. Right. It just takes a lot longer to get there. Yeah. Are you with me now? I'm with you. And so, you know, but them guys get in there and they do butterfly and all kind of crazy stuff. And they can just skip across that water. Right. Now, I'm limited in that department. I, I wasn't, uh, I didn't sacrifice for it. My mom and daddy didn't throw me in the pool when I was a little baby. said, swim, son, you're going to be good one day. And none of that happened to me. Amen. And so, but these boys, they sacrificed and they committed their lives. And they become Olympic, which is, I suppose, the greatest that could possibly be. One of these young men's got 20-something medals, you know. He can, he can just skip across the water like a rock. Now, I'm living in that department. I'm limited in the fellow that can hurl over the, the big old st rods and things, you know, or, or the big Irish that throws the boulder out of country mile. I'm, I'm limited in all that stuff. I'm limited, limited in the, the hot dog eating contest. Come on. I mean, that's what I'm talking about tonight. You know, I've seen them guys, they scarf down 50, 60, 70 hot dogs. I, I'm good to get five bites. So <laughs> I'm limited in that department, and uh, but but each one of us, even in the flesh, have a superiorness about us. Right. Just in the flesh, right. uh, this just this terrestrial being was built and designed, ladies and gentlemen, where it has a superiority all in its own. Right. Would you agree tonight? Uh, uh, there's 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 people, ladies and gentlemen, as I say, can swim like fish. There's people that can run like lightning. There's they swims that uh, people that got a photographic memory. They can right. just memorize things. There's there's people that have different talents in different areas. They're they're superior in that area. Right. But ladies and gentlemen, when we speak about the body of God, then we know one thing's for sure: they're superior in every level. Would you say Amen? amen. We we have no limitations. I like that. Now, some would say we're limited. But to say we're limited is to say that God's limited. Would you agree tonight? We'll get to that in a minute. 
Uh, but to say that we're limited would be to say that God is limited. And I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I serve an unlimited God. I got proof of it. Uh -huh, come on. How many knows I got proof of it? Because He saved someone like me. Right. He had to think outside the box for that. Come on. Come on. Are you with me with that? And he had to think way outside the box for that. He was an unlimited God who saved a sinner like me. Come on, How many has been a sinner? Come on. Amen. So we notice, ladies and gentlemen, that Peter immediately said, Look upon us. Right. And then we find that Peter said, Such as I have. Uh -huh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we'll just turn just two or three chapters backwards, we'll read in Acts, the first chapter, the sixth verse reads, When they therefore were come together, Peter was there, John was there, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Wilt thou this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Come on, listen. Jesus said, Is it not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power? Watch closely. But ye shall receive power. Everyone say power. Power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Somebody say power again. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, some of us has got our eyes at the wrong place. Amen. Somebody say amen. And as they while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. And they said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye these gazing up into heaven? Yeah. It says, This same Jesus, someone say, Same Jesus, Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Yeah. Are you with me tonight? Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, now, the first thing that they said was this Lord, are you about to reinstate the kingdom? Is this the time? Oh. Jesus is resurrected. And he says, Look, this is in the Father only. Right. Yeah. All right. But they said, now, but hold tight, because you will receive power. Right. Are you with me tonight? That's right. And we find in the reading of the Scripture, ladies and gentlemen, that the power was the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Would you agree tonight? Yeah. How many believes that the Holy Ghost is God? Come on. Yeah. We're just laying the platform tonight. How many's got the Holy Ghost inside of you? Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon ye, and ye shall be witnesses, both in Jerusalem. Now, ask yourself, how can you be a witness of something that you've not seen? That's right. Come on. How can you be a witness of something that you've not handled? Right. How can you be a witness of that, ladies and gentlemen? How many believe this Bible is good for today? Come on. Yeah. How many believes that we can learn something from this Bible today? How many wants to learn something tonight? I mean, I was thinking back to great, great people uh, all through the Scriptures and through history and and things that they had to give. I want to give a few things out tonight. Would that be all right if I give a few things out? Come here, Come here, you. Come here, you. Yeah, I forget your name. Right there. What's that? Joseph? Joseph, he's a fine guy. Give Joseph a hand. Now, we're going to use this later. I'm not hitting on none of these people. Are you with me now? What about you? Yeah, you need a handkerchief too. How many has got a handkerchief? Four people. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, as I said, there was people all through life. And don't get too happy with those hangers. I'm going to them back at us. I ain't got before. <laughs> So uh, th there was there was people all through history that had something to give, right. and uh, you know if you have something to give you can give. That's right. But you don't, you don't. That's right. Is that right? That's right. And uh, you know this is a day and time that we're living in that we need to have something to give. Yeah. We're gonna pull for an offer here in a minute. Hey, wait. Somebody say amen. Uh, with that being said, you know, uh, it, there's been people that's had something to give, and it was something put there by God, and there was a day called, Uncle Bob, that they had to give what was given them. You know, if you've been given anything from God, it's not for you. 
Come on. Man. You heard these brothers singing tonight. Beautiful singing, amen? Yeah. And, but you know what? That gift wasn't for them to sing and shout and say, How I love Jesus. Hey, Lord. What good that do? Right. The towel ain't going to shout. It was given for people outside the shower. Are you with me now? It was given for you. It was given for the body of God. So that gift, as beautiful as it is, and as edifying as it is to you, right. it serves a greater purpose Come on. for mankind. Are you with me now? So you wasn't given a gift. You wasn't given something that you're doing for yourself. Right. We're just a receptor. Are you with me now? And so we find in the reading of the scripture after Peter and John's upper room experience that they had something to give. Uh -huh. Are you with me tonight? Yeah. And, and you know, you can't separate the giver and the gift. That's right. Ain't that something tonight? With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we study all through history and we find people that was given things. Right. And just wonderful, wonderful gifts. And it was just amazing. If you go back into, uh, into the biblical days, you find men like Joseph. Who was given the gift, ladies and gentlemen, that he could discern visions, was discern dreams, and, and, and could just be the, the savior for a world. That's right. Uh, not a blood savior, but a prosperity savior, a, a, a body savior, if you will. And he was given this gift. Now, when he was just a small little boy, like, like our young little Joseph here, for instance, he, he had this gift inside of him, and there was going to be a day that that gift was called upon. records it like this. He says, when the time appointment of the Father. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. When the time appointed of the Father. You know, everybody has an appointed time. Yes. How many believe this is an acceptable day of the Lord? Yes. Amen. So we're in that appointed time. So anyways, as Joseph is in the Bible, here we got a little Joseph here, and he had this gift inside of him. And the gift wasn't for himself. He was sitting back there cracking jokes, thinking, if they just knew what I knew. Right. And you know, he wasn't holding all this to himself, but there was a day, ladies and gentlemen, God had to force all this into fruition, but there was a day in which this gift could no longer be held inside of Joseph. That's right. But it had to be administered. Amen. 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 Right. And so there come a day that this gift was challenged. Uh -huh. And it was, it was the most opportune time for Joseph. That's right. Because he was ready to get out of the place he was in. And so this gift was challenged. And just so happened Joseph had the gift. Uh -huh. And when he got challenged and the gift began to work. You know, it was no longer Joseph. Come on, well, that's right. It was the gift. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. It was no longer Joseph. It was the gift. Joseph could have been Pharaoh. Right. He couldn't have been the Pharaoh. Good fella. Joseph could only be Joseph. That's right. And Joseph was no good until the guilt That's right. That's became alive. Are you with me tonight? With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, when Joseph was called on to give, he could only give. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, other great men of God all through the scriptures, we could compare Elijah and Elisha. Right. Each had a guilt. Yeah. And each was only good, ladies and gentlemen. They was only operating in their potential when they were giving. Uh -huh. You could look, ladies and gentlemen, and know it was Noah, the Bible says, perfect and upright in his generation. Uh -huh. Wonderful, wonderful man. Preacher of righteousness, the Bible yeah. records. And uh, we find, ladies and gentlemen, that a word comes to Noah and he begins to build boats. Right. Come on. I mean, he was able to build a boat. Come on. Guess what? Noah had none. That's right. Why would he need one? And then so Noah, he wasn't no boatsman. He didn't, he didn't run around building boats for people and selling them on eBay. Are you with me tonight? And this was a it was his first rodeo. Yeah. For a boat, that is. And so, but there was a word come to him that said, Noah, build us a boat. We need a boat. Well, undoubtedly, there was something inside of Noah, ladies and gentlemen, that had a blueprint, an imagery of a boat before the world ever. Yeah. 
when Noah could only do what what sailors do. That's right. And save people. That's right. Come on. So Come on. and Noah went to extreme. He said, you know, I'm gonna save some humans. He said, I'm gonna save some fish. Yes. I'm gonna save a little bit of everything. That's right. He builds a boat with several levels. Uh-huh. Yep. Somebody say amen. Amen. How many knows this boat we build today has got several levels? Yes. Hallelujah, somebody say amen. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, each, each, each individual had a gift inside of them. I'll take you to Adam for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Here was a man that had found favor with God, insomuch that God allowed him to be in heaven. Here was a man, ladies and gentlemen, that walked with God, talked with God. He was a man that communed with God in the most intimate place. That's right. How many would like to be there? Yes. He was a man, ladies and gentlemen, that God had that God had such stock in this man that the Lord gave him dominion right. over everything. That's right. Turned it over to him. Yeah, man. And for instance, ladies and gentlemen, he, he went to the White House and he cleaned the White House out. Oh, and when he went out the back door, he gave Adam the key. He said, here you right. go, just take over. That's it. That's it. That's about how it was. Are you with me? Yes. And so Adam ruled and he reigned. He was the superior being. Yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you met Adam in the convenience store, you would say, oh, that's Adam. Uh-huh. That's Adam. Right. But ladies and gentlemen, when God saw Adam, uh-huh. Come on. he didn't see Adam in the convenience yes. store. Oh, Are you with me? Yes. You know, when you was Jesus, when Jesus was walking, ladies and gentlemen, he was Jesus, he was in the convenience store. Some said, there's the bastard child. Uh -huh. And some said, oh, there's the one, you know, the anointed one. And, and you know, everybody had different remarks, right. different things, different thoughts about the man called Jesus. Right. You know, the youth, I guarantee you, Mary, she could have put on Facebook his unusual birth. Yeah. She could have put on a, a Twitter about what the angel of the Lord had said and how Joseph had been told and the inquire and on and on and on. But it would not change the perception through the natural eye. Are you with me tonight? But there was a gift inside of the man named Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I've received the gift. Have you received the gift tonight? Amen. So we go all through scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, and we find people. It makes it more real to us to quote that Brother Terry said when he got behind the pulpit. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. How many believe he's the same? If you really believe the same, I want to challenge you on that minute. Now with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, each and every person through the scripture, we come up to a man named Luther. Martin Luther, who knows Martin Luther? About the middle of 1500s, he was a monk. And he, he got a hold of a revelation. And the revelation was this. This is ludicrous to think that you can buy the grace of God. There were salesmen running around at that time for the Catholic Church. Indulgent salesmen. And what they would do is they would sell you indulgence. Right. And he gets this epiphany. You know, when he wrote the 95 Theses, he was not trying to straighten out the Catholic Church. That's right. He was simply trying to show that, man, there's something ain't right here. He right. says, you know, when a penny hits the offering plate, the saints arise in purgatory. He says, this Come is on. weird. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. And so, he, he nails his 95 Theses to the a church while he gets excommunicated on the, I think it's something about the worm. I forget now. It's been a long time. So, read it. But nonetheless, he, he gets excommunicated from the faith. But when he's excommunicated from the faith, it creates something inside of him that he didn't know was there when he was a monk. And there was something hidden. There was something being hidden even in the Catholic Church. And, and there was something that all the time of guilt was inside of a man named Luther, ladies and gentlemen, and, and what happened through the scrutiny and the excommunication of the church, he began to massage that guilt. Somebody say amen. And we have in the middle 1500s, right into the late 1500s, we had a man named Martin Luther who started the Protestant Reformation and called people out of Catholicism and began Now, he says, 
when he's got more money than all the apostles or however they pronounce that, he's got more money than all. Right. Why is he still begging for money? Right. This ain't right. Come on. That's what they get the on that guilt. Come on. Come on. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, some of us cry and moan and groan over things that is burdensome to our spirit. But it's simply God trying to arouse that guilt. How many of you have that? You know, it, it, it makes it more relative to us to understand why Jesus took the cross. Because the Bible says he didn't have to. But it makes it more relative to us why he did. Because the cross was his revelation. That means we even know. So we'll move forward. But, but that being said, Luther came out of the closet, so to speak, and he began to preach justification by faith. You Catholic devils, you know the thieves, robbers, murderers. I hope none of these Catholic in here. Please go. You're all sorry. But, but they're, 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 they're the murderers, they're thieves, they're robbers. And, and oh, and oh, no, ladies and gentlemen, he began to speak out against that. He says, look, he said, you can't buy God. Challenge inside Luther. And when it was challenged, you know what the people would say? Look upon Luther. Come on. When Noah was challenged, people would say, Look upon Noah. Are you with me tonight? When Adam was challenged, they would say, Look upon Adam. Are you with me tonight, ladies and gentlemen? When Jesus was challenged, they said, Look upon Jesus. They should be saying, Look upon us. Somebody say, Amen. Several different instruments. 
She would sing hymns and, and quote poems that God had given her. How many believes God do that? Blind as a bat. If you would think, ladies and gentlemen, that there would be no hope for a lady like this, especially in the generation that she was born in. Women were looked at differently. But rather, her handicap, ladies and gentlemen, her handicap escalated her. Isn't that amazing? And to the point, ladies and gentlemen, that we're talking about tonight. Everybody here knows something about it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying is this. Inside of that blind lady yeah. was a gift. That's right. And the gift was there and all it needed to was to be unraveled. That's right. And once it was unraveled, if you cannot hear the voice of God Come on. through that gift, right. there's something wrong with you. Amen. The brother said if you didn't feel that, your words wet. You know, the talk like that. And so if you couldn't hear God in that and feel God in that, there was a problem with you. Not with the one riding the hill. That's right. That's right. There was a problem there. This little lady in her handicap and in her degeneracy and all through life, the things that she suffered, ladies and gentlemen, there was a guilt there, and once it was called upon, everyone looked to pay the cross. The people was looking upon him. 
I say again, the title of the message is look upon us. The people wanted to crucify him, ladies and gentlemen. They wanted to persecute him. They wanted to stone him. Why? Because people was looking to him. I'm going to tell you, they want nobody stoning him out but preachers. Come on. Why? If people go to build you up and begin to, to, to exalt you, they get jealous. Sure. They pick up the stones. Bless God, you never. Amen. Told you was that entire God. That's what they do. And they're right. Somebody say amen. 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 The lads you don't. You know why the lads you don't? Because they're getting something from the message. Yeah. Are you with me tonight? Right. Oh, somebody said, well, Brother, now you're building up the man. Oh, no, sir, ladies and gentlemen. We've done discussed that. If we've been born of God, we're not men. Somebody say amen. amen. We heard last night the powerful message that we're not terrestrial, but we're celestial beings. Yes, if the Spirit of God lives inside of you, ladies and gentlemen, it shouldn't be you that's alive. It should be God that's living. Are you with me now? Amen. But you know what we do, ladies and gentlemen? We want to live in both worlds. How many want to live in both worlds? That's what I want to do. I want to live in both worlds a lot of times. You know, the Lord be pulling me to go see Brother King Greg. I'd rather go fish, you know. And the Lord's pushing me to go see Brother Ken, go see Brother Randy. And I'd be like, man, I tell you, you know, I've been wanting to do so and so. You hear what I'm saying now? Now the Spirit is pushing me to go see the brothers. But the flesh is saying, you and Uncle Bob, go sit under that tree over there, under that shade tree, and wait for somebody to come buy a pine straw where we can buy lunch. Right. Ain't that right, Brother Jake? All right, see, now, I'm trying to live in both worlds. Uh -huh. But Jesus didn't try to live in both worlds. That's what made him God. Come on. But the Bible says he was obedient right. to, the to the Father. So when the Father said, go see Brother Jake, guess what? He went and saw Brother Jake. Right. Father said, go see Brother Greg. He went and seen Brother Greg. If the Father said, raise the dead, he simply raised the dead. No matter if they'd been dead four days, he just oh. simply done what the Father did, right? gentlemen, that cannot be measured right. with man's measurements. Right. It cannot be comprehended with man's mind. Right. It's never been imagined before yeah. because it's something brand new. Yeah. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. Let's think about it. Romans 8, chapter reads. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. For the earnest expectation of the creature. Somebody say creature. Waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Now notice that, ladies and gentlemen, in the 19th verse. The creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. So we've got to separate the creature and the sons. Are you with me tonight? Alright, 21st verse. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth the pain together unto now. Paul said, not only they, not just the creature. That's right. The sons of God isn't groaning and travailing. Sons of God is there. Yeah. Are you with me tonight? The creature was groaning and travailing. Alright? Now, Paul for Paul speaking in Revelation. He's not speaking in present day. Come on. This isn't a, what I'm saying is this. This ain't Paul speaking present day Paul. Right, yeah. This is Paul speaking 2012. Yeah. Because Paul was groaning and travailing for this manifestation. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, come on, saints. Amen. And not only they, Paul said, no, not only them, the creature, I am too. Right. Yes, I received the first fruits of the Spirit. Amen. But I'm looking for somebody to look upon. Yeah. Somebody say that. I, I'm looking for someone that has a gift. I'm looking for someone to say, this is what I got. Let me give it to you. <laughs> Somebody say that. Right. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of Spirit, we groan with inside of ourselves waiting for the adoption to win the redemption of our body. Yeah. Hey, what's the body redeemed tonight? Yeah. Yeah. How many is wanting it right now tonight? Yeah. All, right. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you would say, you can't That's living in God. That's living in God. Because He's just saying you stay there forevermore. And the Bible says you can speak the word only. When he was thinking about Abraham, ladies and gentlemen, and wanting that baby, and he kept thinking about it, he kept reminiscing about it. And the Bible says he didn't think about the deadness of his body, neither the deadness of Satan's womb. But he counted him who had promised worthy to deliver. And the Bible says, and spoke to the 
those things have been not as though they were. Somebody say amen. amen. Abraham, before the Holy Ghost was given, the Bible records as this, David speaking, he says, blessed is the thing that Abraham hath found. Are you looking for something tonight? Somebody, are you looking for something tonight? He says, what is this thing that Abraham has found? He found joy in God. He found a place of serenity. He found a place of civility. He found God. He found God. He said, look upon me, the father of your faith. Somebody say amen. He found God, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, with that being said, here's the father of our faith. Speaking those things to be not as though they were. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are tonight. And according to Apostle Paul's doctrine, here it comes upon you right now. We'll speak about us for just a few minutes. And we're going to close. Apostle Paul says, I see in the future, I see something coming. Sons, pool of God. Right. That's what it says, that sons. It don't say son of God. Come on, that's sons. Yeah, that's right. Right, so sons is more than one. Now we don't believe in Trinity down here. Come on. We believe in one God. Come on. One faithful. Is that right? You know what we believe in? All right, that's what we believe. And so we believe in one God. And so so we sons, he wasn't speaking about three appearings. That's right. Come on. All right, or two, or four, or ten. He was speaking about a body. Right. right. So the sons now, now, what I'm trying to say is we're not talking about Jesus now. Come on. Oh my. Come on, preacher. We're talking about the spirit that made Jesus God. How many believe it was the spirit that made him God? Right. Amen. Look upon us. And so, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, he says, I see some people coming. He says, that has the spirit of God living inside of them. Amen. Not only do they have the Spirit of God inside of them, they submitted to the Spirit of God. And they wholeheartedly submitted to the Spirit of God. And all their desire, all their, 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 their life is about is being obedient to what they feel God is saying. He says, these are the people that is not looking for personal gain. This is a people that's not wanting to build themselves a pretty church, big church, great work, great this, great. But simply what they want is for God to be pleased with them. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. He says, this is a people that don't matter if they have to live in a cardboard box. This is a people that don't matter if they're going to pick up Coke cans in order to, to get to the next place to preach. This is a people that solely lives off of the Spirit of God. And he says, in this, he says, I see the destiny, the redemption, yeah. the salvation. The translation of the world in these people's hands because they are the sons of God. I'm going to say amen. He says, now look, he says, the creature don't even know it, but they're growing and travailing after this. He said, brother, there's no way in the world. But think about what he said. He said, they also shall be delivered in the liberty of the children of God. You know, something we do, Absolute Church does. We do it pretty well, too. You know, we convict people. Yeah. Condemn them. And we already got them on the cross most of the times. We're in hell. Right. Before we ever try the Spirit. Right. Right. You know, we have spoken on a message called Religious Profile. We profile. They find this. They know we don't want to make it. They mess with us. They know we do. They kind of call us. They know we but according to what we just read here, people that are not children of God is groaning for something. They're groaning for something. Now, you know, you may be one of those people tonight. I'm just going to hit this and feel the Lord drag me to hit this. You may be one of those people tonight that's lost. Yeah, you go to church, but you're useless. You know you are. You ain't running from it. But there's something in you just is not complete. Oh, come on there. You're like, I don't know. You know, all the more drugs I do, the worse it gets. Yeah, come I on. still ain't fulfilled. Come on. More women in a sweet, sweet bed, still ain't fulfilled. Come on. More men in a sweet bed, still ain't fulfilled. Come on. There's something missing. There's a void. There's something missing. There's a void. That's right. There's a big old, big old dark hole there. You fall over it, getting deeper and deeper. How many ever been in a place like that? Come on. Two, yes. Two people. Yes. Yeah. Two honest people. Yes. Come on. And, uh, praise God. Church is grown. Come on. Uh, with that being said, that you know, all you have to see, they suck a pulling at you. Right. There's a void there that will not be filled with religion. That's right. Amen. 
won't be filled with Brother McKinney's teaching right. or somebody else's teaching. Right. It will only be filled with the Spirit of God. Right. The Lord of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're that person or not, guess what? You're the ones this message will be relative to. Right. Because my destiny, the sons of God rather, the sons of God destiny isn't to save the world. It's to save the elect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, somebody said amen. Yeah. How many's got to be elected here tonight? Yeah. I mean, my destiny isn't to save the world. I don't even want to. No. Why don't I don't want to. So it's in me. I, just, I don't have desire to. I just simply want to do the deal what the Father wants me to do. Right. And His Word, ever since I've read it, has been leading me to save the elect. So I just throw the seed out there and you let me eat it. The ones that don't, I just say, oh well, I guess they're not elect. You hear what I'm saying tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We simply just broadcast it. Well, according to Apostle Paul's doctrine, there is a people coming that the world will look upon. The Bible says every knee would bow, every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Somebody say amen. I've got to ask you something tonight, ladies and gentlemen. If this sons of God, if this manifestation of the sons of God is going to save somebody, then what are these people going to do? Think about it. Hang on what the scripture says tonight. He says, Because the creatures have also shall be delivered into the bondage of corruption to the glory of the church of God. We know the whole creation, grown and travailed and pain together until now. Why? For the manifestation of the sons of God. As I said, look upon us. Look upon us. Ladies and gentlemen, if we would begin to live the life that Jesus has promoted for us to live, we would begin to unveil this guilt that lives inside of us, then we would be the Savior of the world. You know, they're around us. Jesus, when they come to stone you, you can say this. For what good deed do you stone Not the good deed, Mr. McKinney. Not the good deed. Brother Thomas, not the good deed. Brother Randy, but because you being a man, make yourself God. He says, when I live a holiness, sanctified, purified life, you automatically consider me a God. Somebody say amen. You never really have to. Because the denominational world preaches, you can't be perfect. That only an angel could be perfect. Only a God could be perfect. But yet we see a message that Jesus promoted out of his own lip. Saying, you be perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. Gentlemen, First Peter. I'm going to read this before we close here. First Peter, first chapter, the 18th verse. First Peter, one and 18 says, "For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things." He says, "As silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ." As of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Right. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls. Watch this. You know, as you can have the soul of God. Come on. Come on. The Bible says, Hebrews says, He said, if you draw back my soul, Shall have no part in me. Oh, the Bible. Hebrews says that. Anyone else? And I may have the wrong Bible. He said, if you draw back my soul, who so God's soul shall have no part in me. That's right. Your soul may die, but his can. Somebody say amen. Right. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope be. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeyed the truth through the spirit and unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Watch this. Being born again. Someone say born again. Born again. Not of corruptible seed. Amen. But of incorruptible. By the word of of God which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. According to the scripture, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says Jesus was the Word. That's right. According to the reading of the scripture, ladies and gentlemen, the Word was the original seed. Come on. According to what we've just read tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if you have conceived of the Word, you're the original seed. Come on. Somebody amen. say amen. Don't have any right. I'll give somebody a microphone if it ain't right. You can preach. That's right. 
That's Bible. Saints of God, he says, you've not been born of corruptible. Brother McKinney is corruptible seed. Brother Shepherd is corruptible seed. But Brother, Brother Shepherd and Brother McKinney had a rebirth. And that corruptible became incorruptible. Are you with me tonight? When that man became incorruptible, that seed of life, that word seed, ladies and gentlemen, when it began to build inside of the image you see, and you call Brother Shepherd, that God calls the Son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, that man that spoke last night didn't speak as a man, but we said, get my heart's burn with the sign of
You know why? We've been preaching a doctrine, a false doctrine, for a hundred years, saying he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. So now the people don't take us at our word because we preach a doctrine that had no scriptural basis. So now they said, oh, there's that preacher that's been preaching to my children 125 years that it's coming. Ain't nobody coming. They ain't nothing going to happen. They've been talking about that forever. But if we begin to preach, he's here. It'd be different, wouldn't it? What, what you mean, Mother McKinney? Well, what if you can't prove it? What if you can? What if you can? God won't prove himself until he's challenged. Why would he give himself to a generation that really don't want it? But you begin to preach, he's here. Somebody's going to come challenge him. You're going to be scared to death. You're going to be scared to death. But you know what? There's going to be something Kirk turns on inside of me. Because this flesh man, he begins to think of his inabilities, his insecurities, his lack of. But that God, that guilt, that predestinated seed of God turns on and he says, The stand of God, be thou made whole. Come on to say it again. The stand of God. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, that queen of Sheba left Solomon. She said, This what? Oh, yeah, everything you heard was right. Everything you read in the tabloids, Fox News, CNN, every bit of it was right except one thing. The half wasn't told. When the people begin to pull from that vein, that royal bloodline inside of you and I, they'll see the half has never been told. Sons of God, you cannot die. Somebody say. 
in there. There's never been one elect, ladies and gentlemen, that has done something contrary to the Word. You know why? The Word cannot be contrary to itself. It is the Word. But because of the Lamb, because of His purpose, He sent a good godly mother, a good godly father, to bring us into this world that these pure spirits could have a human experience and we could bring salvation to the world. We've never been here before. That's why you people want to taste everything in the world. I want to smoke wrong. I want to see how many women I can do this. See how many boys I can do with. I don't know what I'm talking about now. Somebody said you should talk like that at church. Why are you living all going to your house? What you care for? You act like you holier than that. I'm talking. I was ready to talk like that. Jared, you was ready to do some things you do at home too. I'm going to experiment a little bit. I'm going to see you have been here before. This is new. But you wouldn't have to open a Bible and somebody begin to think, preach things of the Word and there would something inside say, That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Who ever had that happen? That's right. Oh, yeah. God's going to hold you accountable because you can't say you didn't know what was right. The seed of God built with a conscience. Because the seed of God was created by the Holy Ghost. You didn't receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It simply got awakened inside of you. Somebody said amen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right, we get well tired. All right, so being born again. Who's been born again? Right. Not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass, for the grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. But the Word that now, he, ladies and gentlemen, we're not talking about this. Come on. You can throw that outside. Man, this, 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 this will ride a little while eventually. Little pages will fall out. But no, he, he didn't told you now. You was born by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. But the Word. See, you, you read that one scripture. See there, Mr. McKinney, by all flesh is grass. So, uh, we got to die. Where's grass? We're going to die. Gonna, but he didn't say you. Right. Yeah. He said flesh. Come on, man. Amen. Come on, man. Now he's talking about the Word. But the Word of the Lord endureth forever. Somebody say amen. amen. And this is the Word which by the Gospel is preached unto you. The Bible says, does anyone know how immortality is going to be brought to life? Timothy said, by the preaching of the Gospel. It's going to be brought to life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I could, real, real quickly, I could unveil, or not unveil, but rather read you every scripture dealing with you and telling you you do not have to die. But you know what? You'd still go by your grave plot. That's right. Come on. It didn't do you no good. Right. Come on. Come on. It wouldn't do me no good neither. It wouldn't do nobody no good. It wouldn't do the disciples no good. But if you let the Word teach it to you, right. you'll never die. Never. Yes. Somebody say it. You let the man we heard last night, talking about now that spiritual man, you let him preach your immortality, you'll never die. You let him preach your salvation, you'll never be lost. You let that, that spiritual man, ladies and gentlemen, preach to you about perfection, you'll always be perfect. But if you try to consume it upon yourself through the letter, guess what? It'll breed worms. And you'll be just as evil and hard as you are today. Are you even today? Ladies and gentlemen, as Peter said in closing, he says... Look upon us. Look upon us. Look upon me. Look upon John. And then he said, silver and gold I don't have. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, now rise up and walk. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. According to the reading of the scripture, we find that his ankle bones receive strength. But it goes further. They took him by the hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and animals received strength. And he leaping up stood, walked, entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you tonight, by revelation, I believe that they imparted the Holy Ghost into this man. Uh -huh. Because what they had been given was a corruptible seed. It was incorruptible. And when he said, look upon Behold me, the Son of God. Yes. For I was with him when he says, Tarry here in Jerusalem.
Jerusalem until I come. Yeah. And when you see Jesus, the angel said, Jesus, the same way he said, he shall receive. He said, and you're going to receive power. Peter said, you know what, young man? I was in that upper room when power came. of the rock. Right. And now I finally saw what he meant when he said, upon this rock, Peter, I'm going to build the church. He said, before that day of power, it was not obvious to me. But there's something about it, ladies and gentlemen, that Holy Ghost enters a person. It has a way of enlightening us. How many have been enlightened? I say someone look two or three times about my crazy language. I know I pronounced a couple, mispronounced a couple words. You may want to say who that was. They're going to tell me out of service. I could embarrass them, but I'm not. I got poor language on the Bible. But that being said, this is something about the Holy Ghost. When it enters you, it says, it enlightens you. He says, so I finally saw who Jesus was. And if I would have known Brother Pike who he was, if I could have only known, if the Lord would allow me to saw who he was, there's no way I would have denied him. Thank God I couldn't see. Thank God I was blind. But he said, when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the Clifford Shepherd, he says, I identify myself with the rock. Right, come on. And you talked about that last night. And he says, I got something the religious church don't have, young man. I'm paraphrasing a whole lot. I got something the religious church don't have. Fella, what's that, sir? He said, well, I don't have no money. They do. But I don't got power. They don't. Can you make my body whole? Yes. But I can give you an outlet to the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's called the Holy Ghost. As soon as his hand touched the man, when he reached for his hand, and when his hand touched Peter's hand, rise and walk. Ladies and gentlemen, I preached a message on the stimulation of revelation. As soon as he felt that stimulation by the touch, it turned something on inside of that crippled man. And the Bible says he began to dance. If he would have been a Christian before, he'd have been in the temple worshiping. Somebody say amen. That's what they did there. He was at the gate, not inside. But the Bible says he went inside. Leaping. There was more than happy, ladies and gentlemen. That's some ankles receiving there. Yes. Praise God. But he got a revelation. Yes, he did. I gotta tell you, when he went noisy around the town, he didn't say Peter. He said the sons of God is doing their work. <laughs> sons of God's working again. You thought you was through with Jesus. Looks like he's remultiplying. <laughs> How many of you can't kill him? <laughs> you can't leave him. <laughs> you can't lose him. You can't get him off your trail. <laughs> he sticks with you like an old flea, saints of God. You know why? He's God. <laughs> when he dies, Someone else got a hand. You got one too? I told you I was going to get them back. <laughs> you know what? They couldn't have given them to me if they had them. That's right. They couldn't have given them to me if they had them. Look upon us. Let's stand to our feet. Look upon us. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you got to give it. You gotta get it. Because it's life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He wasn't talking about him. He was talking about something inside of him, wasn't it, Brother Randy? The Father's life, all life. Now, if you receive the Father, ladies and gentlemen, you can do what the Father did. You can give life. 
If you receive the Holy Ghost, Brother Ken, you can administer the Holy Ghost. If you receive the Holy Ghost, you can lay hands on the sick. The Bible says and they'll recover. I'll go further than that. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you can speak the world into existence. The Bible says it was created by the Word. We've discussed the Word lives in you. You've wondered why that you'd said things, thought things, and things happened. You'd be like, man, honey, you know, I was just saying that the other day. That if that person didn't so-and-so and didn't watch ever, you see what's happened now? You didn't think about it at the time. That word was powerful. How many is we been now? Ladies and gentlemen, but you can't give it if you don't have it. You can't be the manifestation of the sons of God if it's not been awakening to you. You can't. I can't. We can't. No matter how good we are, it ain't going to happen. The world needs someone to look upon. But they got to see something when they look. Are you with me tonight? It's here tonight. The God that spoke the world into existence, He's here tonight. We sang a song, He was there all the time. He was here all the time. He's been here. He's never left us. My Lord, He gave us the promise. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you until the end. Didn't we take Him at His word? Are we all waiting for Him to come back? He said He wouldn't leave. How could somebody come back and be left? He's here. He's in us. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to turn Him on. How many wants to turn Him on tonight? How many wants to turn Him on tonight? How many wants the world to look upon you and see the sons and daughters of God and say, my Lord. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? When I look at men like my Uncle Bob, like my grandfather, elder men that I grew up with over there, I don't look at these fellas as men no more. Look at Brother Clifford Shepard, things he spoke about. Look at him as a man. I'd be, I'd be a fruit, things like that. Men don't understand those things. Men can't comprehend and do the things that they've done. With their hands. It don't work like it. There's something operating there that has no limitations. Yes, they only use a portion of it. That's our problem. We got to learn to exercise it. Begin to speak it into existence. Somebody say amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Get us a little song together. How many need something from the Lord tonight? If you need something for the Lord, won't you just raise your hand? Don't be shy. Nobody's going to embarrass you. If you need something for the Lord. Would you agree? 
But you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone and you're going to have to receive it. It ain't no longer good enough to talk about it. So I'm going to do it next week. We're not promised next week. Today is the day of salvation. So I'm going to give you an opportunity tonight. Step out your seat. If you need something to go, step out of your seat. Come to the front. We'll pray with you. How many knows we believe in prayer? And we'll pray with you and we'll ask the Lord to guide her, to guide us. How many needs the Holy Ghost? If you really need the Holy Ghost, why don't you raise your hands? If you need the Holy Ghost. Anybody need the Holy Ghost in here tonight? Let me see your hands. It isn't meant to be ashamed of. It. It's the gift of salvation. If you need the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift giver is here. It's not Brother McKinney. I can't give you nothing. But he can. And he lives here. How many knows that's right? He lives here. So if you need something tonight, don't be scared. Step out your seat and get what you need. He's a family God. He loves family. So he'll be honored to give us something tonight. Let's just continue to worship the Lord.
Jesus Christ. We command the healing for Sister Mama and in the name of the Lord Jesus. We send the word. Everybody raise your hands and begin to pray. We send the word right now to Sister Mama in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Raise your hands as we pray.
and you will deliver in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe it? You understand? He's saying all you want. He's saying your devotion to me, to Brother Ray, to others. He's saying, I never think he's forgotten about you.
You go back your pastor up. You go back your church up. You go over there and, and be in the house of God. Yes, Gracie. Go over here and get Brother Meyer make sure she gets the church unlocked. I think Brother Terry has got some more kind of a message he's going to be producing in the morning. For the Lord is going to be delivered and when they look up, they're going to look at Brother Terry and say, Man, where did Brother Terry go? Look at the Lord Jesus standing there. Oh, isn't it so wonderful? You've been going over to Brother Randy's? Well, don't go to Brother Randy's tomorrow. Go to the Lord Jesus tomorrow. Because I'm sure he's got a message he's going to be delivering. You don't have a church, you come right back over here. Because I'm sure that God will be here to deliver the message. Amen. Back your church. Then when you don't have one at 5 o'clock in the morning afternoon, we'll be back in the house of God, worshiping and praising the Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, as we depart out of this spiritually real, Lord, to walk back into the flesh, Lord, things are prepared for the carnal body. Lord, the ladies have went through so much work and so much time and so much effort, but God, they've done it in love. They've done it in charity, God. They've done it with compassion. So, Lord, we ask you to take it, to break it, to bless it, God. We ask you to magnify it, Lord, and we ask you to deliver it unto the body that the spiritual body will be edified through the natural. God, that we might be able to retain strength, God, to deliver the message that is up today a perfect and holy people, peculiar in the eyes of the flesh, but perfect in the eyes of God. Lord, this little offering tonight, God, that you sent forth, God, I don't know if it'll meet the need. God, I know it will, because you sent it. Lord, I believe that it's over and above the necessity that it's going to take. Lord, we ask you to break it, to bless it, to anoint it, to sanctify it, God, that it will produce the Word. Lord, it will go out and reach the millions, God, that is seeking for you. We thank you for doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. Amen. If you're able to